Today I'm at PDAC and I'm going to meet and talk to Dr. Louisa Marino, who is the president of Defense Metals. Uh, good morning, uh, Louisa. Good morning, Jack. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'd like to know a lot about Defense Metals, so I'd like you to tell me about the company, what it's doing. It's a, it's a rare earth project, I understand that. Tell me something about what it's doing, what your deposit looks like, and, and what your targets are for the future. Sure. It's a carbonatite deposit. Uh, it's located in British Columbia, uh, in Canada, here in Canada. And um, we are at the pre-feasibility stage. We have a, a resource of about 30 million tons uh, at 2%. But uh, the good point for our, for our project is that the first few years, we're going to be uh, mining relatively uh, high grade, more than two, uh, as high as you know, 2.5 to 3% in the first few years. And the result of that as well, given the type of deposit that we have, uh, is that we're able to produce a high mineral, uh, high grade mineral concentrate, uh, more than 40%. Um, so, as I said, we are at pre-feasibility stage. We are, uh, what we're envisioning uh, is to concentrate the material and then produce a, a hydrometallurgical plant uh, build a hydrometallurgical plant and, and produce um, a chemical concentrate from there. What's your target? What are your target dates for production? You know the way we are envisioning from from the from the PEA and now as we move forward uh, with the, the pre feasibility study, it's probably a, a span of about uh, five years uh, to, to to production. You know, hopefully, uh, that's what we we envisioning. Uh, you know, obviously we have permitting and all these other things. But as far as the work that has been done, uh, the pilot plant was extremely successful. So we're very happy with that. Um, and, um, and now we likely will do another pilot plant as well, uh, both for flotation as well as uh, for the hydrometallurgy. I, I, I'm wondering if the public understands that no matter what happens with EVs, uh, the fact is that we will be making some EVs and a lot of hybrids and some internal combustion engine cars. The point is, all of them use rare earth permanent magnets. And the hybrids and the EVs use 10 times as much rare earth, for example, as an internal combustion car. But even internal combustion engines use, let's say, a half a kilo of rare earths in various parts of the car. So that even the North American market is still eight or 10,000 tons of rare permanent magnets now, okay? As the EV and hybrid era uh, comes on us, uh, that'll be much, much larger because a, a typical hybrid or EV uses 10 times as much rare earth material as an internal combustion engine. So there's a bright future. And right now, America only has one producing mine. I'm talking North America. Yes. So, uh, I think that you've got a your your timing is reasonable, quite frankly. Right. And um, what would be ultimately the amounts you could deliver? Do you think what would, what's your target for uh, production amounts? So the target that we have is uh, twenty five thousand tons of total rare earths. So that brings about so if you think about just um, the magnet materials, so we're looking at about four thousand tons uh, okay. a year give and take um, so but you you are absolutely right there is there, there's always going to be a need for for rare earths it's not so much or i should say in addition to the forecasted demand um, there is also the the, the issue of a, a diversified supply chain and the need of producing more rare earth outside china to say perhaps to relieve china a little bit from supplying the rest of the world all the refined product that they they, they, they do. You know, I, I also wonder if the investing public understands that companies like car companies, they like to have up to five suppliers of any important commodity. So if anybody falls out of you know the basket, they they can they can they still have uh, sourcing. And if the United States and Canada were to produce all electric cars, for example, next year, they would need almost 50,000 tons of magnets. 
and that is not going to happen anytime soon, okay? So again, your project sounds pretty good to me, and uh, I wish you a lot of success. Thank you. And what I'd like you to do is please come back every so often and tell us how you're doing, because serious rare earth projects, and you, you're you telling me that your, your yes. grades are two and three percent, that's a serious project. Uh, we need everything we can do in North America. It doesn't matter about China. The Chinese have an internal market that's vast. They, they, they need to and they need to supply themselves. Correct. Okay, it's the same thing. Politics aside, every region or nation needs to supply itself. So um, <laughs> now that I think Washington has finally recognized that Canada is part of North America, <laughs> excuse me for being sorry, cynical. Uh, uh, we're looking forward to the development. Canada, actually, when I started out looking at rare earths, uh, when we when I was doing a report about 15 years ago, we discovered that maybe half of the world's rare earth deposits were in Canada. Okay, and yet here we are, 15 years later, and there's no producing Canadian mine at the moment. Okay, so. Things have got to get better. I won't even talk about the United States, right. but things. But have... you, you would agree that having a resource is one thing. Yeah. Uh, having a metallurgy to extract that resource and make it a reserve is something completely different. Yes. And I think that is where defense metals is different. There's a lot of resources. There's a lot of rare earth resources in Canada, fortunately. Um, but I think in terms of metallurgy, we are the ones that are the most advanced. So as you know, all the hard rock producers in the world today of rare earth produce a high grade mineral concentrate, at least 40%, you know that. And this is where we are. And, and that is, it goes a long way to making this, you know, a rare earth project economic. And we are able to achieve that. L let me uh, finish by asking you, what's your own background? Uh, it's diverse. So I study engineering physics, uh, but I was in investment banking a number of years following the rare earth uh, space, traveling around the world, visiting mines, processing plants. Um, and, and, and so I know a little bit of uh, the geology of rare earth, just about enough to be dangerous. Uh, and I follow very deeply the metallurgy uh, of, uh, of rare earth because I believe that contrary to gold, perhaps in some of the base metals, in rare earth, metallurgy is everything, right? Uh, it's just like real estate, they say location, location, location. In rare earth, metallurgy, metallurgy, metallurgy. You know, you're uh, in a very small group of uh, people who have the right background and the right attitude for for mining and development. So uh, thank you for, for being there. Uh, all right. Uh, keep us informed. Let us know what's happening. And thank you for stopping by today. Thank you so much for having me, Jack. Always a pleasure talking to you.